was always going to be the opening track for the album. It sets the tone of the record about kind of, you know, leaving negativity behind and the naysayers and trying to go and take on the world and, you know, got these big drums opening up the album uh, as a bit of a reminder that I used to be a drummer as well, which was quite cool. And uh, the song was kind of written as a, as a subtle thank you to my parents actually for letting me make so much noise in the house growing up with guitars and drums and everything else so that's what that's what that song was about there's a cool story behind change it up uh that song was actually written the day that i bought home uh my telecaster and i'd wanted one for a long long time and i was at wembley guitar center and I was going to pay and that was the day I got a phone call um, asking if I wanted to go on this big support tour um, around arenas, which was like the biggest thing ever to me. Um, and I came home, I plugged in the Telecaster and I wrote Change It Up in about five minutes. And actually had this song written before Life in Love in England, but it didn't kind of feel right on that album. so. We, we held it off and I'm, and I'm glad we did because I think it suits this record perfectly. Stronger came out a really positive song on the album, but it was actually kind of written from a bit of a negative place. I'd had a bit of a bad day in this industry that I work in and um, I needed to let off some steam. So I did what I usually do and packed up a bag and headed down to the gym to do some boxing. And while I was walking down Brighton Seafront to the gym, I just had this phrase going over in my head, you know, about, you know, kind of you know, stronger and, and, and coming out stronger the other side every time you get knocked down. And by the time I got to the gym, I'd written the whole song. Um, so I was kind of scrambling around for a pen and some paper to write down the lyrics so I didn't forget them. And um, what's quite cool is actually on the album, in the album sleeve on the CD and, and the vinyl, there's a picture of um, where it says Brighton Marina and where we did the photo shoot for the record. And that's where I finished this song. Um, so that's quite cool to get that in there. And, you know, I'd kind of been joking around a bit of a tongue in cheek thing that, you know, being in the music industry, sometimes it feels like you're in a boxing match, always on the ropes and, you know, it's kind of how long can you, how long can you go for? And that's then where the idea of a boxing music video came from. So then, you know, I got into training for that and, um, and we shot the video and it became this really kind of, um, you know, positive and hopefully uplifting song. It has some great messages about it already. And um, so, yeah, it was, you know, something really positive came out of the negative. <laughs> One More Day is a song about a boy and a girl meeting on a night out and wondering what the other one is thinking. And I think the energy we managed to capture in the studio kind of reminds me of like the passion of youth and, you know, maybe when you're kind of 18, 19 years old and you're going out and, you know, or maybe go on your first holiday with your friends and that kind of thing. And um, it's a very different style song for me, um, but it was a lot of fun recording it. I think it's gonna be a great live song as well. Wild Child was actually the last song that we recorded for the album and we had everything tracked, everything done and then over Christmas I wrote this song and I just loved it and so I called up Jake and I said I'm really sorry but we have to do one more so we set everything back up again all the drums, guitars, everything just for this one track but I'm so glad that we did because I think it's well, I know it's, it's my favourite song off the album and it's possibly my favourite song I've ever written. Um, and it was, you know, it was a very personal one for me, but I think it's just, you know, it's about the, the realistic side of being a musician um, and, you know, it's not the easiest thing sometimes with your social life and that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, it's kind of one of those things that if it's born in your blood and you want to do it, then you're going to do it anyway and just to embrace it and, um, you know, go after your dreams.
I wrote the streets where we grew up in an unusual way for me. I wrote all the lyrics first and then wrote the music to it and I'd never do that. But I had this kind of idea, I wanted to write a song about a boy and a girl growing up together and the girl kind of maturing and growing up faster than the boy. And, you know, the girl, you know, she just starts changing the way she looks and, and the way she talks and all this kind of thing. And the boy doesn't know whether to change as well and he doesn't want to do that or to stay as he is and, and kind of, you know, go his own way. And I just thought it was a really cool idea for a song. Um, so I walked down to, uh, to the beach in Brighton and I just sat up on a wall and I just wrote the whole thing out in about half an hour. Um, and it was almost like a, a poem, really. And then I had this riff kicking around um, that's the, the riff in the, in the verses. And I just went home and, and found some chords for the, uh, for the chorus and, and that was the song done. I think the line about, uh, you know, we wrote our names on, on the walls where we kiss is, is possibly my favorite lyric on the album. I just think it's so cool and there's lots of kind of imagery in that song. And, um, you know, hopefully a few people will be able to relate to it as well. We actually recorded Lied To Me twice. Um, we recorded it, first of all, as quite a heavy rock song. But I felt that a lot of the lyrics were getting lost and to me, the lyrics were probably the most important part of this song. Um, so we kind of, we just redid it. We swapped the electric guitars for acoustic and we put this great drum beat in the song and it just carried it so well and it just completely transformed the song. Um, the vocal hook, at the beginning and that later comes back in the song was actually an accident. I was waiting to record a, a, a chorus and I was kind of just warming up and messing around in the vocal booth and we just happened to be recording. So then once we listened back to it, we adjusted it slightly and then we're like, oh great, we'll put that in. That sounds really cool to open up the song. And um, yeah, it became the main, the main hook by Complete Fluke. I don't need this. I don't need this hanging round my head. So Let Go started off as an acoustic song, we made it heavier, so it basically did the opposite thing of Lied To Me. Um, and I had this, it is a very kind of quiet and a very melancholic song, but I felt that it needed to be more positive. And as soon as I tried it out on an electric guitar, I just loved the energy of it and I wanted it to be like a, a song about, you know, letting go of stuff, but it's okay to let go of stuff and it's okay to move on, you know, whenever you're ready. And that's what the song is about and that can be about, you know, a lot of things. Um, we put these great glockenspiel uh, notes in the, uh, in the choruses, which were actually three different riffs all together um, and that came out really well. And it's probably got my favorite bridge in it, out of any of the songs, that kind of middle part when it breaks down to just that bass and a bass drum, and then the acoustic picks up, and then it just goes into that last chorus. I really loved that, and um, as soon as we recorded it, we were just like, "Oh, that just sounds great!" And it became such a positive song, and I, and I, and I really, I really loved that. Out of the Blue is a song that I'll always hold very close to me. Um, it's about losing a loved one and trying to, you know, get through that. And um, yeah, you know, it's a song, a song for absent friends. You know, everyone goes through it. And uh, it was a song that was written with a lot of sadness, but was recorded with a lot of love. This was a song written on a busted up old guitar that we found in a cellar and it only had five strings and I was kind of messing around on it and then basically that's how I wrote the riff for the verses in the song and it's actually the same guitar that's on the front of my very first ever EP on the front cover and so it was kind of cool to write a song on, on that guitar. Um, once I tried out on electric I realized it needed to be louder and I wanted to be more kind of powerful. And I think it just sums up the album really well. And it was always gonna be the last track in my mind. And it's just a song about, you know, people wanna put you in boxes and sometimes they don't understand what you're doing because you're trying to do something different. 
And it's about kind of ignoring all that noise and just going out and doing what you believe in and what you love and, um, you know, kicking doors down and making some noise. I would wait a thousand years or more to see the look upon your face.